Merry Christmas, all of you. 2021. This Christmas is a little better than last year's. Less Corona, less sickness, more hope, more joy. And a lot of noise that you can hear. But hey, that's, that's fine. I um, was thinking of my first Christmas, or rather the Christmas I remember for the first time that ever happened to me. Christmas for me. 1954 in Aden. Uh, my father became a principal of a school in Aden, so we moved from India to Aden in 53. And in, uh, in a few months' time, my father found out that the local doctors, Dr. Dias and Mrs. Dias, were nice people worth meeting, worth uh, getting in touch with. So he contacted them and found out that Mrs. Dias, Lillian, was his uh, classmate in uh, Rajkot Dharmendra Sinji College. She was Desai then, Lillian Desai. She was the sister of Manhar Desai and Mahesh Kumar, the famous actors of Gujarati. And uh, Mahesh Des Manhar Desai was also a, a very popular uh, mythological actor on Hindi cinema. So, we met. And my father revived his old acquaintance with... Uh, Lily Foy, as I called her, and her husband, Dr. Dias. Handsome man, she was very pretty. And they had a little girl called Vivian. She was a couple of years younger than me. Uh, she wasn't a very good-tempered person, so I stayed away from her. Besides that, when you're eight, you don't want to associate yourself with girls. You know what I mean. We went to their place, which was about uh, 8 to 10 miles from where we lived. We lived in the town, and they were away from town. I, I forgot what the name of their area was. But the car would come with a driver and pick us up and take us to their house. And then we would spend the night there. Uh, usually we went on a Saturday evening, Saturday afternoon, after... I finished my school after Madhuvai got back from school and uh, when it cooled off a little and spent the night there uh, and come back on Sunday evening. This is uh, how we did it every once a few months. But in 1954 <coughs> Christmas, we were invited especially for a Christmas party and then stay over. I was very excited because that was going to be my first Christmas ever, you know, celebration. And we all went there. I, I remember I was dressed up. Uh, my mother and father always were dressed up, but I was kind of, you know, I still am. Not too good at, uh, at uh, wearing good clothes. But I, I remember I was well dressed. We went there. We had a very good time, a feast. A lot of goodies and cakes and pastries and halvas and oh, there was fish and meat and rice and dal. I mean, it was a feast. There were a few friends they had invited from uh, from the town, uh, other doctors, uh, other prominent people, and so we had a couple of other uh, kids like me. We got along fine, but. Later, I was told that there was a gift for me, and I was very excited. What gift? You know, when you are eight, gift is a big thing. And I was told by Lily Auntie that uh, you will be getting it 
tomorrow morning because Christmas Day is the time when you get your gift. Santa Claus brings it to you. I knew the story, you know, and I knew that Santa was a bearded man. Uh, and imagine uh, a man uh, who wasn't, he's a mythological man, a man who wasn't there and all that. But uh, still, excitement about getting a gift. The next day, I was given a box wrapped, gift wrapped, and I very excitedly opened it and found out a huge, it looked huge then, huge jeep with two guys, two soldiers sitting in the front, and uh, there was a little seat in the back which was flippable and it became a, two machine guns pointing on the back. And it worked on friction, gyro. So what you do is you just boom, and it'll just boom, take off. Very fast, noisy, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed that Jeep. Vivian wanted to play with it, and I let her, you know, but uh, I wasn't very happy that she touched my gift. I don't remember what she got. I was too wrapped up in my own uh, joy of getting a gift. <coughs> After we went back to our house, I just drove that Jeep and drove that Jeep and drove it and drove it and drove it. Uh, we had a long corridor, about 15, 20 feet long. Uh, and we had rooms on the side, you know, each opening into that corridor. Typical uh, Aden style uh, construction. And so I would sit at the one end and push that sucker. Vroom, it'll go all the way to the end. And made a noise like nobody's business because you know it even had some kind of a, a frictional thing that made it louder and louder. I don't know how my parents could stand it, <laughs> but anyway, it was a lot of fun. That was my favorite. That was my only Christmas toy actually, for the many years. I don't know what happened to it. I think I broke it and it's gone. Then there was no Christmas celebration for us, for me at least, in Vadwan and in uh, Ahmedabad and Mumbai. In Mumbai, we used to just say hello and Merry Christmas to our Christian friends. And of course, all of us enjoyed the New Year, Happy New Year and all that, go out in the restaurants and eat, but never the Christmassy atmosphere till I went to America. On my first Christmas in America, I was in Canada. I was in Vancouver with our family friends who, were, who had migrated from uh, Uganda to Vancouver. They invited me to come over and spend the Christmas with them, which I did. It was cold. Vancouver can be very cold in uh, December, but it was a lot of fun. It's a beautiful city. In spite of the cold and the fog and uh, the mist, you could see how pretty the roads and the avenues were and the, and the downtown was and the botanical garden was. And the family, Thakur family, was very nice to me. We had a great time together. Uh, that was real. I got gifts. You know, we exchanged. I, I knew by then that you buy gifts for people. So we did that. Then onwards, we used to have Christmas on and off, on and off, for two or three years. My um, <coughs> um, friend Jant 
and his um, girlfriend, then it, he later he married her, uh, Connie, she decided to have a, a Christmas party in 1974. And we had a great time. We had Christmas party and we had a lot of gifts. Uh, I got so many gifts that year from Connie and Jan. Amazing. Of course, it was reciprocated. Uh, I got some for them too. Uh, basically, we got one another uh, things that were useful. I got a I got some woolen socks, which I never used. <laughs> I got a sweater, a pullover sweater. Connie thought that Jayant and I uh, were always underclothed for the cold, uh, breezy San Francisco weather. And so she decided to equip us with lots of warm clothes, which we never wore. <laughs> Uh, so that is how it is. We continued our tradition of getting together on Christmas and New Year. Uh, plus, we had good times together in Easter holidays. Uh, then we moved to Mississippi, and then there was the Haggard family with whom we spent the, the Christmas um, holidays. And now we are here uh, with each other. Varsha used to put together the nativity set she has uh, brought from America. For first two or three years she did that. She would put it up here and uh, invite the children and tell them stories about uh, uh, Jesus and uh, how he was born and all that. Kids liked it, but they were more interested in the goodies, of course. <laughs> I would be too. <coughs> but anyways, uh, Christmas gifts are very important to children and to all of us. But I think it's the giving that really gives us uh, the actual genuine pleasure. The gratification of making someone happy. I think it's a very noble um, emotion and we all have it. We may or may not try to show it. We may or may not try to act on it. But isn't that a beautiful, like you give something to somebody and you look at that face and the face has a nice smile, uh, sort of a smile of gratitude, a smile of happiness, smile of joy. And you f that makes you feel good. Yeah, that's about it. So, I, li I like to feel good, so I give. It's, it's being selfish. <laughs> but a noble selfishness. Like uh, Aunt Rand said, she said it differently, the virtue of selfishness. So this is sort of a virtue of selfishness. Sorry, Miss Rand. Anyways, a very Merry Christmas to you all. Take care and a very happy 2022.